Hello there, and thank you for coming after lunch today instead of taking naps, which I think most of us would like to be doing. Um, I would encourage you all maybe to put that in your feedback forms for Affiliate Summit West, that we would all like that nap time as we discussed at lunch today. Before we get started, I do want to say that Affiliate Summit wants to make sure that you either fill out the feedback forms, or it looks like within the networking app, you can go into the sessions and give them feedback on my session. And it is really important to them because they do use that feedback in the future. It's really important to me because I do go through every time I speak and I take the feedback very, very seriously, almost sometimes too seriously into heart <laughs> so but it is important to me to know um, what you think of the presentation what kinds of things you'd like to see in the future but also and even more importantly every day five entries will be randomly drawn to receive a networking plus pass with three session tickets for Affiliate Summit West in Vegas. So um, if you just take a couple of minutes to circle numbers, write a couple of comments on that form or go into the app then Affiliate Summit would really appreciate that. So this session is technically only 18 minutes long and then with a 12 minute Q&A at the end. So we will hold all questions until the end and I'm going to get through as much as I can in this 18 minutes. Um, my name is Trisha Myers. It says up there, I'm a licensed attorney. I've been an affiliate marketer for a little over 12 years. I'm also the executive director of the Performance Marketing Association. And the reason that I wanted to do this presentation today is that I've had to do a lot of continuing legal education courses over the years, and almost none of them apply to me. So I go to these sessions, and I go to these presentations, and I feel like I'm getting so little valuable information that I can use every single day. But I did go to one session one time that was about negotiation, which is something, of course, that attorneys do all the time. But what I found in that session was that learning to negotiate effectively wasn't just something that I needed to know as an attorney. It was something that I needed to be able to use every day in my life. Life with my spouse and my kids, with my business partners, with everyone that I interact with. So my hope is today that we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to go through some different negotiation tactics and talk just about the tactics themselves. And you can think about how you might use those in your everyday life outside of affiliate marketing. Then I'll go more specifically into how you would use those particular tactics in affiliate marketing. Um, and then at the end, because I felt like 18 minutes wasn't enough to teach you everything that I wanted to teach you about negotiations, I'm giving you five steps today, but there's actually 10 steps total that I think that you should know and use. So I'll give you a link to a download at the end where you can download that information to be able to get all of them. So first of all, um, I'm going to dedicate all of the dogs in my presentation to my mom up here because she's a dog lover and I thought, no, really, there was really nothing good in the stock photos that pertain to negotiation and contracts, so I decided I would just go with all animals because they're cute and everybody will smile when you look at the slides. So when they take the pictures of my session, everyone's going to be like this. So before you go into any negotiation, this is absolutely imperative. Every single negotiation you go into, no matter what it is, you've got to do your research. You need information from your side, all the information that you can gather that you know, but you also need to, to figure out as much as you can from the other side. And you're not going to be able to find everything you want from that side, but you're going to need to extrapolate a lot of information too, and I'll talk about some of those tactics. Um, think about when you're going to buy a car. You're not just going to the car lot and walking up and looking at a car and saying, okay, I'll take this one. You want to know what that car is selling for at other car lots. You want to know how much the insurance is going to be, how much the taxes are going to be, uh, what's the Kelly Blue Book value on that car. You're you're doing all that research in advance before you go to a car lot. That's a negotiation. That's the same thing you need to be doing in every single negotiation in your life, is doing that research in advance. Never go into a negotiation uneducated. That's the biggest mistake. Never. All right. So in this case, um, when it comes to affiliate marketing, what are the types of research that we want to do? Some of this information you're going to be able to get yourself. Some of it you're going to be able to get from within the affiliate networks. Some of it you're just going to have to go online and search around, and some of it you're going to have to extrapolate. Um, commission rates. How many affiliates do I have in the room? All right, how many affiliate managers? All right, lots of affiliate managers. All right, so as an affiliate manager, you're going to have data on all of your affiliates. So you're going to be able to take a look at the particular person that you're negotiating with, but also all of your affiliates in general. But you also should be looking at your competitors. So whatever, whatever niche you're in as a merchant, you should be looking and seeing what your competitors are paying out, what their cookie links are, what type of exclusives they're doing, and things like that. Um, as an affiliate, you want to try to figure out what other affiliates are making. So. Kind of a pro tip for you affiliates if you're trying to figure out if you're being lowballed in a program or not. There are a couple of places that you can kind of cheat and try to figure out what other affiliates are going to be are getting paid. 
One is if you look for cashback sites. Um, so like Cashbackholic is a site that lists all the different cashback sites that pay out for certain merchants. You can go there and you can see what all those other cashback sites are paying out. And there are a couple like Top Cashback that are generally paying out 100%, so basically you can see what they're getting. Um, most of the others pay about 50%, so you can kind of double what most of the rest of those cashback sites. And it's not an absolute comparison. If you're a coupon site or if you're another cashback site, that's a number that you can use. If you're a content site, your traffic may be even more valuable for that. So you may see that they're getting 12% um, as a coupon or cashback site, and you're a niche content site, you probably want to ask for even a little bit more than that. Um, other places you could go would be like to go into skim links, the big links, see what they're paying out. Because um, whatever they're getting, you know that they're making a profit off of that too. So you know they're probably getting a little bit more. So that just gives you a little bit of information to work with. You can't go in and say, I know you pay out 7%. But in your mind, that research helps you kind of figure out what you want. Um, another thing is to go into the network and like and share a sale. You can take a look at what the average sale is and what the average commission is. And if you divide that out and it comes out to 5%, but the program says they're only paying 3%, then you know that there are a lot of other affiliates that are getting over 3%, a lot of them probably getting even more than 5%. So by looking at that data, you go in educated and you know that you could be getting more than what's listed on the site. Um, for merchants, one of the things you need to do when you're looking at like social media followings, because I know things like that are important, the page visits and social media follow following and things like that, don't just look at those numbers, look at the interactions too. Look and see on the Facebook page. They might have 10,000 fans on that Facebook page, but if not a single person is liking or sharing or commenting on what they're posting, then those numbers, when they come to you and say, I have 10,000 followers, you know that that 10,000 followers might not be as valuable as what they're making it look like it is. So look for those interactions too. Um, the other type of research you can do is just doing simple Google searches. If you're an affiliate and you want to work with a merchant um, and you want to do a review for some of their products, you do a Google search for that merchant and review and take a look and see if a lot of those other review sites are using affiliate links and see if they say something like, I received a free product you know, in, review, in exchange for this review. See um, if they have exclusive coupon codes or something like that as part of their review. Then you know those are the kind of things that you may want to ask for. Um, important really for the bloggers, how many bloggers are in the room? Really important for the bloggers, if you're coming from the other side of influencer marketing, sponsored posts, that kind of thing, and you're coming into affiliate marketing, you need to be educated on the differences in those things. So you need to research you know, the difference between being paid per post and the difference between being paid with affiliate commissions. Um, it's going to make your negotiation with the affiliate manager much smoother if you understand that. Um, another thing that you might be able to do as an affiliate is to figure out how much, what percentage of the overall sales you constitute for a merchant. And I don't have time to go completely into this, um, but I have a blog post on Trisha.me about it. And basically, if you can see what the sale numbers are for a merchant and you can tell that the sale numbers that are coming through for you are consecutive numbers, you can extrapolate out that data to figure out, okay, I gave them seven sales today and I can tell by the difference in the number of the transactions that they had 100 sales total today. So I represent 7% of their revenue. That makes me pretty important. That's 7% of their total revenue. So if you figure out a number like that using those sales transaction numbers, you might be able to see how important you are in the overall scheme of that merchant's business and use that to your advantage. So many options, German Shepherds and Chihuahuas and I don't know what the rest are called, Cindy could tell you, but so many different options to choose from. Um, when you're in a negotiation, you have all of these things in your head that you're thinking about. Your first thought is probably commission. As the merchant, as the affiliate, your first thought is probably commission. But think about when you're buying a house and you go into that negotiation to buy a house. Are you just going in and saying, I want to buy this house and this is the price I want to buy it at? Probably not. You're thinking about how many days you have until closing and what kind of financing and are they going to leave the curtains and do you get to keep the stainless steel refrigerator they have. You're, there are all these different things that might get bundled in. I and mean, it might be that the bottom line is, I want this house. But you know that you have all these other things that you can play with as well. So when you're going into any kind of a negotiation and you think that there's any flexibility in those other things, take a look at what all those different options are that you might be able to bundle in. Um, and then make a list of all of those different options and what all the different permutations are for those, those different things. Um, and then consider things that might not make a difference to you, 
but they make a difference to the other side. So if there's something that you're willing to give up, like you don't really care what the cookie like this, but you think that the merchant, if you can say, you know, that's fine if it's a, you know, if it's a 30 day cookie, that's fine with me. Because you know that you're probably going to be able to to close those transactions pretty quickly, go ahead and give the merchant that or vice versa. If you're the merchant and you know that people tend to make the purchase within the first 24 hours anyway, tell the affiliate that you'll give them a 365 day cookie. It, whatever it is, it might not necessarily be important to you as one of the options, but if it's important to the other side, that's leverage for you. So this is a lot, a lot of different stuff to think about um, no matter which side you're on. If you're an affiliate, some of the things that you have is these different things that you can bundle into this negotiation. Um, you have homepage placement, of course, that's a big deal. Top of the site placement, sidebar placement. Merchants love that. They will ask for that first most of the time. Um, newsletter inclusion, if you're sending out newsletters, even if it's just blog broadcasts, if you say, you know, I'm willing to add you to the top of that blog broadcast for the next three months or something like that in exchange for a higher commission, you could bundle that into it being featured in the newsletter. If you write about different products, but you're willing to feature a merchant in that newsletter, that's something you can negotiate with. Social media mentions is a big one that a lot of people don't think about. It's a big part of the negotiation to say, I have a Facebook following, I have a Twitter following, I have an Instagram following, I have a Snapchat following, and these are the numbers. And include those, the number of times you're willing to mention that merchant in social media in exchange for whatever it is that you're wanting. Um, videos, the same thing. Now there are so many ways to make videos. It used to be we said, oh, video is so easy. You just put it on YouTube. We had no idea how much easier it was going to get <laughs> that you could just click a button on Facebook and all of a sudden you're streaming live or that people are Snapchatting videos constantly all day. Um, so think about the easy ways you can do video now that don't have to be an entire big production. Um, featured merchant, whether the featured merchant is in a particular blog post or featured merchant across your site, that's something to think about that you might want to offer the merchant. Now in reverse, as a merchant, the kind of things that you might be willing to offer an affiliate in order to get all of those things at the top. So kind of reverse these things and think about the play between the top half and the bottom half, what you could be negotiating against each other with. Um, products for review, offering that affiliate to send them a product if they will review it for you. Sending that product as a prize, which is different because it's a way for that affiliate then to generate more people coming to their site to be giving away a prize as opposed to them just doing the review of the product. So those are a little bit different, but at the same cost usually to the merchant. Um, inclusion in their marketing materials. You know, there are times that maybe merchants are writing blog posts or they're sending out newsletters and if you're an affiliate in that niche and you're putting together really great content, maybe the merchant can say, you know, we're going to mention you in our newsletter. We're going to mention you on our Facebook page to go and read this post that you wrote about us or to read this review. And that would be huge for an affiliate to know that they would be able to get that kind of exposure in return. Um, exclusive coupons versus vanity coupons. Raise your hand if you know the difference. All right, there's a very fine line. Um, in affiliate marketing, exclusive coupons are gonna be the coupons that you're getting only through the affiliate channel or only for you as a particular affiliate. So um, this exclusive coupon as a, an affiliate channel exclusive is gonna be available to all affiliates. Exclusive to you means only one affiliate is going to have that exact same deal at that time. That's huge, that's top level, that's the most that the merchant can give an affiliate and it's the most that an affiliate can ask for. Exclusive coupon, you know, Sunshine Rewards is the only site that has free shipping for this merchant with no minimum anywhere. It's the only place anybody's gonna get that. Vanity coupons are a little bit different. They have some kind of name, like think of vanity license plates. Um, they have some kind of code that's tied to the name of the affiliate site. And they might not be exclusive. It might be that you will, you're willing to give every affiliate a free shipping coupon that has their name in it. So I have a you know Sun Reward free shipping coupon. But it doesn't matter what coupon site or what niche site my visitors go to, they're going to see free shipping everywhere. So there's st it's still a good perk. It's something that merchants aren't having to give away a lot. It's going to be mainly programming time on their side for most of them to give away that kind of um, vanity code. But for an affiliate, it can be a big deal because it's showing your visitors that you have some kind of special relationship with that merchant. So um, those exclusive codes and those vanity codes can be worked on both sides. Um, Placement and slotting fees. This is really controversial in affiliate marketing because a lot of affiliate managers, how many of the affiliate managers out there will pay placement fees or slotting fees to affiliates? How many absolutely will not? Yeah. And then probably the rest of you in the middle. 
So it's, it's a big deal. A lot of people are on either side of the other, and there are great arguments on either side, but it has to be part of the negotiation. If an affiliate is coming to you and asking for a slotting fee, it has to be a part of the negotiation. You have to figure out what it's worth to you, if it's worth it or not. Um, one thing to think about, other than that placement of slotting fees that you can negotiate back with are bonuses. So we're not going to give you that placement fee, but after you hit a certain amount in sales or after you um, have so many sales, then we'll give you bonuses. So if the affiliate really feels like they can send a lot of good traffic and send a lot of sales, you'll take that deal. If the affiliate doesn't want to take that deal, then maybe you want to think about how many sales the affiliate thinks that they can send. Counter offers. Counter offers are sweet and cuddly like kittens and puppies. Everyone's smiling, right? Because we're taking pictures. <laughs> um, so the goal in any negotiation, I mean, it doesn't seem like it. I'm a lawyer. I know everybody hates lawyers. We're antagonistic and we're mean and you know we only want what we want. We don't care about the other side. Good lawyers understand that counter offers make everyone happy. That coming out of the negotiation, you want both sides to be happy. And this is particularly important in this industry because we work together for a long time. I mean, just looking, I see Chris there. I've been working with Chris for 11 years now. I mean, that's a long relationship. That's not the kind of thing that I want to blow by having one contract negotiation with him or one negotiation for an exclusive or a gift card or a prize or something like that. And then I completely screw it up. And the rest of the time, I'm never able to have a good negotiation with him again. So particularly in this industry where there's a lot of crossover, a lot of people that stay a long time, you want the other side to come out happy as well. Um, you can't just think about yourself. So how do you make everyone happy? Um, number one, in the commission rates, you can't just think about we've got this side and this side. With the commission rates, always consider that you're going to come together. Um, the counter offers can include the really big terms like the actual commission rate and you might have to split the difference and meet in the middle, but it also may be the length, the time length of running that commission. So it might be, no, I'm not gonna give you an 18% commission forever, but I will give you an 18% commission for you know, the back to school month of September or um, you know a special Christmas thing or whatever. So it's part of the negotiation is not just the amount of the commission, but it's how long that commission is going to run. But also the social media mentions, thinking about the number of social media mentions because that's something that's easy to negotiate. So you can say, you know, we want you to post this on your Facebook page twice over two weeks or three times this month or something like that. That's a nice hard number that you're able to negotiate. Um, the cookie length, as I mentioned before, sometimes cookie links matter a lot and sometimes cookie links don't matter at all. So it's something that you can definitely find room to make both sides happy. The value of the coupon. You know, you're starting from here, which is the coupon that's already listed on the merchant site, and you're starting here, which is what the affiliate wants, which is 100% off plus free shipping. You're going to come somewhere in the middle for that coupon, and it's going to come down to um, a lot of factors that we'll talk to in a couple of minutes. But the value of that coupon is something that you're able to negotiate so that both sides do come away happy. One side might be wanting um, higher average order value. So if the merchant wants a higher average order value, then you're getting something else up in order to give a coupon that is you know free shipping on $150 it might be a, a great for you because you know you're gonna have sales of over $150 but for the affiliate they're thinking my customers aren't gonna care about this this isn't a great deal for me so you're gonna have to give them other stuff in exchange to help make that better um, and bonus tiers bonus tiers are great for merchants to be able to give back for an affiliate um, to make the affiliate happy because with bonus tiers we have an incentive to keep going all month long. It's not just that we're going to push out this offer one time and see what kind of sales we get or write this blog post and then leave it. If we know that we're going to get commission tiers, we're going to be constantly looking at those numbers trying to reach that next tier all the time. So being able to negotiate those commission tiers is really important too. All right, objective standards. Um, the only thing I can figure with this is that it, it has something to do with measuring numbers and it looked like they were measuring, so that was as close as I could get for this particular slide. Um, objective standards, how many of you take negotiations personally? When you're going back and forth, contracts, or you're trying to get a commission rate, or you want something from a merchant, you take that personally, and it's hard. Um, we respond, I am one of those people that responds emotionally. If a merchant tells me no, if I want something and they counter offer and say, sorry, you don't give us enough traffic in order to get that, I take that personally. My site um, is kind of my world, it's my baby, and so I take that personally. You can't do that in a negotiation. You have to remove 
all of that. You have to remove the emotion and you have to remove taking things personally from it. So what you want to do is you don't want to base any of your negotiation contract terms on your feelings or any kind of supposition, but instead you want to use objective standards to reach the deal. And that just, it's more fair when you, when you look at things that are standardized. It helps prevent future problems with the contract if what you've done is you've used the objective standards coming in. And some of those kind of things would be um, market value, looking at precedent, you know, looking outside the affiliate marketing world. You're talking about um, costs, uh, professional standards, things like that. It's kind of hard. This one's a little hard in the abstract, but I think you'll understand better looking at this slide. Um, so in terms of the objective standards, as a merchant, you can't go to an affiliate and offer them a great deal when it's not and have it come back on you. And I'll give you a great example. We often get these emails starting in Q4 that say, if you give us homepage placement, we'll give you a 2% commission increase. And I think, oh, 2% commission increase. Okay. So that'll take me to 6%. So I'm now getting 6% if I put them on my homepage. And then I go and I look at what my competitors are paying out in cash back, and I see that they're paying back 12%. So I know that that merchant has lowballed me. I know using an objective standard that what they did was offered me something that was of almost no value to them and they wanted the most value from me. The relationship is now dead. I mean, the relationship at that point, I don't trust them. They're not gonna get anything out of me and I'm never gonna trust them again. So look at the terms that you're offering your other affiliates and be fair about it. Be fair about what you're expecting from them and what you're willing to give them. Also, there are a lot of surveys. There's the AFSTAT survey, there's the PMA salary survey, there's the affiliate benchmark survey. There are a lot of different surveys now in affiliate marketing and we're getting more and more data and there more, there's more coming out. But use those kind of things too to make sure that what you're doing is objective and fair. Also, the EPCs within the network. I mean, affiliates, we know how to go in. We know how to look at the EPC. If nothing else, every affiliate knows how to look and see what that number EPC is. Not everyone necessarily knows what it means, but they know bigger and they know smaller, and they can compare those kind of things. So look at those EPCs because you want to make sure that they're in line um, for the negotiation. Otherwise, one side or the other is going to feel really taken advantage of. Um, also, profit margins. You as the merchant, you know what your profit margins are. So you know what you can invest in this affiliate. You know how far you can really go in order to have a good relationship and be able to get the sales. So be objective, use that information. And then lastly, one of my favorites is year over year and month over month growth. And the reason I love that one is because it's specific to each affiliate. And what you're saying is, I don't care how much traffic all those other affiliates are sending. I want to work directly with you and I want to increase your traffic compared to what you've sent me before. So whether it's increasing month over month and saying, okay, last month you sent six sales, what can we do to get that up to 12 sales this month? Or if it's looking at last year's holiday season and saying, okay, we're going into Q4, let's look at what you sent in Q4 last year, let's bonus you or give you some kind of sales commission tiers for this Q4 as an increase from last. So it's fair, it's very objective, it's saying this was your performance before, this is what we'd like to see now. And if you hit those numbers, we're willing to pay you this extra amount of money. Um, so you can see how that kind of takes the feeling and the, from my side, it's not a feeling of rejection or anything like that, like I felt with that merchant who lowballed me with the 2%. Instead, they're saying, we know your performance, if you think you're capable of more, Show us that and we'll reward you for it. And that's fair and objective. And lastly, confirming and writing. I mean, this is absolutely, probably one of the most important, confirming and writing. Every negotiation has to end with a statement of terms. There has to be a statement of terms in the end for both sides to, to be getting what they want. And the formality of that statement is gonna be determined by how big the deal is, how much money is on the line, how long it's gonna last, and things like that. Um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we had a conversation, we had an oral contract. You go to law school and you figure out that oral contracts, which aren't contracts are pretty much crap. Most of them aren't upheld. There's confusion, you know, people are angry. So that's not something that you want to do. You want to make sure that you always have a statement of terms. So confirming in writing. Um, the easiest, we're going to just start with the most basic. Confirming in writing is just the email. And it's an email that says, this is what we talked about at Affiliate Summit. This is what we agreed upon. And this is what your side is going to do. And this is what my side is going to do. It's very simple, but it's a statement of terms that both of you sign off on. And next is changing the terms in the network. You know, as a merchant, most of the networks you can go in and you can change the terms, whether it's the commission or the cookie length or whatever. You go in and you change those terms and that's formal, that's a formality because the affiliate either has to accept those terms 
or reject the terms or let them roll over. So the affiliate is you know, agreeing to the terms when you change them within the network. Um, an insertion order, like Impact Radius deals with insertion orders. Some of the other networks sometimes use insertion orders. Also formal contracts. If it, at the very furthest point, having a formal contract might be necessary if you're doing something that's worth a lot of money or is going to last you know, six months or a year or something like that, you might need to hire an attorney to draft up some kind of formal contract. Um, but of all of those, the start and end dates are most important. Um, you want to have the terms in there, but you want to say this is the date that this is starting, this is the date that it's ending. If it's ongoing, you want to say this is the point at which we're going to have some kind of checkpoint to see how everybody feels and what we're doing with us. So. <coughs> All right, so those are the top, fit, top five that I promised that I would give you. And now, cute puppy with glasses, the entire 10. Um, this will be the five that we went over and then five others that I think are important as well. And whether you use it for affiliate marketing or you just read through it and kind of think, okay, this is something that in the next time you're negotiating with your spouse over you know, who's gonna do the laundry or you're negotiating with your kids over how much time they're gonna get to be on Netflix or whatever it is, as you go through, you'll think about the negotiation, you'll think about that research, you'll think about what the other side wants, comparing things, both sides coming out happy, um, family, kids, all of that. You know you want everybody to come out happy. Same thing with affiliate marketing everyone comes out happy so um, you're free to download that it's just kind of a one pager um, so I have just a few minutes left for questions looks like I went over my 18 but they let me so I'm gonna be happy with that um, any questions yes if you as a new affiliate start out at a low commission is it gonna be hard to negotiate it up as the new affiliate starting at a low commission, is it harder to negotiate up? It's going to be harder. So what you have to do is think about in doing the research and those options you can bundle, you're going to prepare as much information you can about what makes you unique. Um, so it may not be that you have a huge social media following right now, but it might be that you have a very interactive following. So I only have a thousand followers, but you see every time I post, 10% of them react to something that I post. So look for whatever it is that is unique to you or the positives that you have, and then weigh those against what you're trying to get. What I'm trying to ask is, are you fixed that that's supposed to do well for the merchant? Are they going to be willing to reopen the negotiation later? I, will they reopen the negotiation later? Yes, almost all affiliate managers, managers will reopen the negotiations. So if, even if you start at the lower point and you say, fine, I'll take the 5% intro, I'll show them what I can do. After a couple of months, you do start sending them sales and those sales are good sales. <coughs> then you go back to them. Um, chances are they're probably gonna reach out to you if you're due and you start sending good sales to them. But even if they don't, then that's the perfect time to go to them and say, hey, okay, I've done my research. I've sent you this many sales since I started with you. I know that you're paying other affiliates a little bit more based on your st your stats within the network. So I was just wondering if we could talk about, you know, a commission increase or some other things like that. Absolutely. Yes. So now with your value, which is paid by merchants. And a lot of times when negotiating commissions, the merchant might come back and say, we'll give you the higher rate but use our income program. What's your thought on that? So yes, the networks do take some of the fees. So a merchant might come to you and say, we have an in-house program or, or want to work something outside of the network. It really depends on your relationship with that merchant. If you have a really solid relationship with that merchant and you feel like you're okay with going outside the network, if you trust their tracking, if you have a formal agreement, if you trust the relationship with them, then it's worth it to go outside of the network. If you haven't really worked with them that long, if the tracking is kind of sketchy, you know, they're just gonna send you a spreadsheet once a month that tells you how much money you made or something like that. Unless it's somebody that works really well for you or you have a great relationship with, it might not be worth it to do that. Yes, Sadie. The slotting fees. Um, this is another name for placement fees. So a lot of times um, an affiliate will say, we will put you on our site, but you're going to have to pay us X amount of money just to be added. So you know, a coupon, a coupon site might say, we'll add you, but you have to pay us $500 to get your coupons even onto our site. Um, placement fees are a little bit like that. They might say, if you want to be on our homepage, then you pay $500 plus the commissions to be on our homepage. So usually that's going to be, you're going to have to have a lot of leverage in order to get that kind of slotting or placement fee or be in a niche that's really great. And in order to get that, you're going to have to prove things like um, number of page views, EPC on your other sales and things like that. 
Oh, and we're finished. If anybody, I see other questions, feel free to grab me, come up and get business cards if you want to download uh, my information. I'm at Sunshine Trisha pretty much everywhere, so you can find me. Thank you all. Please don't forget to fill those out. Thank you so much.